Hello, it's John here, up in Historic Howarth. And, um, hello, how are you? Hope you've had a good week. In incredible, my last video had 24 views. I mean, it, it doesn't sound much, does it? When, you know, you see others getting 7 million and all that malarkey, but um, I've got 24 views, and I'm really happy about that. So thank you to everyone who watched about Marigold. Now, speaking of Marigold, yeah, really nice, re a really nice tea. And I did feel a bit light. I must admit, I did feel a bit lighter. Yeah, a bit happier. But what I would say about it if, if, is if you're looking for a herbal tea or a caffeine-free tea, yeah, that you can drink every day, then, I, then for a few reasons, I'd, I'd, I'd pick Marigold. Tastes lovely. With a little bit of honey, even better. And um, also you get a lot, you get a lot for your money. It's quite light, being petals and that, but you get an awful lot for your money. So it, you know, it would last quite a while, but it's, it's okay to drink it. And that's that. So yeah, I really enjoyed that. Now this week, as promised, we're going to look at um, horny goat weed tea. So first of all, I'm, I'm, got, I'm a bit worried that I might not get through the week with this because you don't get much for your book. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you what you get, what it looks like. There, can you see that? That's, um, that's what it is. Just, just, just like a, a rant, it's just, just like a, a collection of twigs with a few leaves on it. And there we are now. Legend has it that I think it was a Grecian goat farmer was um, observing his goats one day and he noticed that whenever they ate a certain herb they became frisky, shall we say. And um, yeah, he assumed of course that this, um, this herb Epimedium I think it's Latin, it's, it's it's known as, but um, but um, yeah, he assumed that that was making them frisky. That's as far as the story goes. We don't know whether he tried it on himself and found, you know, we don't know whether he's old or young or anything at all about him. Just that he, he saw his goats eating this and noticed they became frisky. And also, I've been on the net and there's not there's not a lot of research done about it. It's um, been used in China, Chinese medicine for a long time to treat erectile dysfunction, and that's that, that seems to be the main the main thing. Now then, yeah, I wonder sometimes, you know, this thing's quietly been going on for for centuries. This horny goat weed, helping men, you know, to overcome the issues. Of erectile dysfunction. If you were a big pharmacy company, you wouldn't want any research done. It much research done on it, would you really? Because Viagra is making you an awful lot of money. So I, do, I just wonder if the, the stuff, it, it, if that makes it, that's, well, that suggests to me maybe it is quite effective. But um, we don't know. Now then, I'm going to take it for a week. I have no partner. Yes, yeah, so I'm a little concerned about what will happen if I do find myself feeling, frisk, feeling frisky all the time. Um, but anyway, this is this is part this is part of what you know what I decided I would do. I would, yeah, for better or worse, I would I would drink the teas. So here we go. Let's get the bad boy out. So look at it now. Let's go. That's quite, that's about, I think, an 11 minute brew, maybe 10 minute brew. And it's got that lovely. Like I say, I really like it, it's got a right. It just tastes to me like, like an oily fish. I mean, I know it sounds, sounds gross in a, in a, in a tea, because of the, of, you know, of, of all, all the mental associations we have. But, um, 
But here's the thing, guys. It tastes great. It's a really nice taste. I personally like it. Mmm. Mmm. I think I, I, I saw a couple of articles that were saying it's apparently good for arthritis. Not 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 arthritis. The other one, osteoporosis. So it's quite good, and also uh, thickening the the uterus, the walls of the uterus. Yeah, if they're too thin, it can you know damage the baby or, or be bad for the baby. So that's actually, so that's interesting, isn't it? Does that suggest you can take it while pregnant? Which, if you've watched this for any length of time, you know that most of the contraindications are all about taking things by pregnant. Now, I'm not saying do take it if you're pregnant. I'm just saying it's suggestive. Of course, before you take any teas, do your own research. Look into it. Consult a medical profession if you really, you know, unsure still yeah I mean I personally believe these things are good but don't take don't just take my word for it please do your own research yeah, and, and find out for yourself what you think I'm just t taking them and, and, and showing you what happens to me if if anything so that's that that's the horny goat gosh, gosh it's delicious I'm gonna have another sip excuse me hmm Oh, when I finish here today, I'm gonna. I've got some red peppers. Some no, I've got some peppers, a red, orange, and a, a red, yeah, a red, yellow, and green one, and some celery. I'm gonna make some juice. And have that for my lunch before I do my meditation. And that's it, really. And I normally I drink the tea when I meditate, so it's it kind of fits in nicely. It kind of fits in nicely with everything. So let's hope that's what happened. Now, cheese update. Um, I'm down to my last block of cheddar, it's a bit, bit worrying, but don't worry. <sighs> Tomorrow, I've got a kilo and a half of Danish blue on the way, which I don't know. I'd... I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a note. I, I feel drawn towards blue cheeses, so I'm wondering if, um, yeah, I'm wondering if they're better for your hearing. We'll find out soon enough. I think, like last week, you know, last week I said, right, that's it. Nearly a year up, I'll stop eating the cheese. I found myself rather reluctant to give it up, to be honest. So, I'm addicted to cheese, I don't know. But, but there we go. Yep, I've been doing, oh, I've been, I've got, I've got an, an indoor bike, so I've been doing five mile bike rides every, every other day, kind of thing. And um, you know, despite the amount of cheese I eat, the um, the old belly seems to be an inch or two smaller. Well, perhaps perhaps a centimetre or two smaller. But we're getting there. But so I'm going to continue with that. Yeah, I found out I got I put my um my sound bar and on and with, with the woofer thing on. Blimey, I, yeah, I had to turn it right down. In fact, the bass now I have the bass on minus two because I don't know whether it's because it's not a particularly expensive product, but you know, you just get that strange rumble where there's gonna kind of, you know, in it, kind of like he's, you know, you stood in the middle of a motorway. That strange rumbling sound. Anyway, so turn that down to turn to turn it quite down. Really, 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 really think there's something in this. I think that's it now next week. Because I've been getting a bit chesty recently. I don't know why. But I've always <clears throat> got a bit of a tight chest. I mean you know, shift it straight away with some hiss up usually, but I thought there's a, a, a specific tea, the clues in the name, it's called Lung Wart, like St John's Wart, but Lung Wart, which is supposed to be the bee's knees for the old respiratory system clearing out phlegm and all that getting you strengthening it and stuff so i thought that's something i can gauge can, and share the information with you so i will okay there's um 
there's something I need to, to say before I go, and that's um, I'm just going to ask you, what is the most dangerous insect? Okay, it's a hepatitis B.